That was Chef Andy Kitko from STK Restaurant. And I am salivating and thinking about running over there and abandoning the, sh- abandoning the show, but not until we speak to Steve Hamilton, who has just written a really fantastic book. Uh, it falls into the Ronald Reagan unputdownable uh, lexicon. It's called The Second Life of Nick Mason. And Steve is on the phone from Boston right now. How are you, Steve? Good. I'm doing good. Thanks for sticking around and not going to eat. Uh, you know, th- th- you know, you have a hit book when all the other authors in your genre are championing it, and uh, everybody loves it. For, uh, Lee Child has mentioned it, Stephen King, uh, John Land, everybody I know. Uh, in fact, we just had Brad Meltzer on. I always forgot to tell him that you were going to be doing the show. But uh, the, the book reminds me of Elmore Leonard. Um, uh, is, is, was he an influence on you in any oh, way? At, oh, God. Elmore Leonard is, I mean, I grew up reading Elmore. He's a fellow Michigan guy. Uh, I just I just love him. Yeah, no, that's that's the best thing you can ever say. Thank you. Well, it's, it, in fact, when Leonard passed away, I was thinking, gee, who's going to, you know, carry the torch now and, and write these kind of books? Because I wouldn't necessarily always call them dark, but they're realistic and... Right. Not always with a happy ending, and I don't want to, to pull any spoilers, but uh, tell us about, I've read the book, but I I tend to sometimes go in the wrong areas and give too much away, and I don't know uh, what I should or shouldn't say about this book, other than that it's fantastic. Oh, well, thank you. Well, just, I mean, just to put yourself in this character's shoes really, really quickly, um, if you imagine that you're you're in federal prison and you're doing a long stretch. You're not going to get out for a long time. And, and you're, someone makes you this offer that will get you out. And it's, and you have to take it because it's the only way you're going to see your family again. Um, and not only do you get out, but you, you suddenly have this whole new life. You're living in this amazing townhouse, driving this amazing car. You got money every month. And it's everything a man could want. But, um, but, but the cost of this is that Whenever the phone rings, you have to pick it up and you have to do whatever you're told to, to do, no, no matter what kind of crime it is, no matter what horrible thing that you never thought you'd ever do. That's the deal that you've made, and there's no way out of it. Where did you get the idea for this book? It's, it's also it's, it's a, a different kind of a book. As, in fact, as soon as I started reading it, I started thinking, wow, this would make a great movie. I understand there's a movie deal in place already. There is yes, with uh, with Lionsgate. Yeah, I, I don't know who's going to play Nick Mason, um, but uh, I'm real. You know, it's, I've never had a book made into a movie before, so I'm just, I'm just. It's just exciting and cool and great, and I'm just. It's going to be a lot of fun just to go and and, and see it. You know, when, when it's actually a movie, you can go sit in the front row and eat popcorn with my family. Well, so the the whole prison aspect of it is is interesting as well. Um, there's what would we call the the character a criminal mastermind who's who's in prison who who runs things on the outside from the inside yeah the, he's he's sort of based on some uh i mean really all all of this is based on i mean crime, crime writing comes out of research comes out of the things that you experience in in real life um i've i've been in maximum security prisons um not I, as I an inmate i hope i didn't do time myself i i, I probably would try to avoid that and, but it's a strange thing to recommend, but if you ever get a chance to go visit somebody in a maximum security prison, and I, and I hope it's not somebody real, real close to you, but if you get a chance to go in that place, it's something that you'll never forget because there's something about going into that place and then hearing that door close behind you. There's nothing like the sound of a, of a prison door closing. And, uh, and, and all of a sudden, everything is so different in there. The air is different. The light is different. There's this, there's this smell. It's like a antiseptic smell mixed with just human despair just just hopelessness it's it's just something that it'll just burn itself into your memory and as a writer you 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 take a moment like that and you save it and you and when i was in there i was asking myself man what if this was real you know what if i was in this place for good i mean i would do anything to get out and um that's the kind of thing that you can just use as a writer as as the beginning of a story and you can build around it and build this character who's in this in these circumstances and ask yourself why he got there and what's going to happen when he gets out what he has to give up to get out 
and um, and, and Darius Cole is, is the crime figure who yes who does get him out. He's he's again he's based on real life figures who they're they're so good and so talented and and instinctive and and cunning and vicious and they whatever qualities that they needed to get to the top of their organization when they were out of prison. When they go into prison, it's not like they are just gone. I mean, they as long as they have contact with the outside world, they can still sort of stay in charge of, of their operation. And and actually, there's like this thriving black market in cell phones in prisons right now uh, to, to the point that some prisons are trying to, you know, they have to try to block cell phone signals because there's, cause there's so many inside. Um, so you so you you take these little elements and you you can sort of imagine that there's that, that this guy is in there and he sees his he's doing double life he sees it as nothing but a problem of geography uh, he can still stay in charge of his of, of his whole operation and did 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 your research lead you to specific crime figures that this is like an amalgamation of various people that yeah you, I mean, there are created? I mean there are, there are certain gang leaders. They're gang leaders in, in, in Chicago who have in in the past, in the recent past, and going going back, I mean, you don't have to go back far to find guys who, I mean, there are very powerful gangs in, in Chicago. Uh, when I have a really good friend who's a, who's a cop in Chicago. He wakes up every day. He's one of 12,000 cops in a city with 100,000 gang members. Um, so it is just an overwhelming odds against him already. Um, and uh, he's just going out there trying to do his job. Well, I've read about the the gangs in in L.A. and the power that they wield, and from in and out of prison, it doesn't yeah, seem to really exactly. matter. Uh, and now, just to go back to Elmore Leonard, uh, back when I was doing book reviews for People Magazine, I interviewed him, and he was really, really big on research, and yeah. his his books like yours, really just have uh, had an authenticity to them. One of the things I found out from Leonard himself was he, he didn't actually like doing research, and he used to hire a lot of researchers to do it for him, which I, I, I was fl- floored by when I first heard that. But uh, as long as it works, and he, get, he, got, he, he used to get it right, and you really have with this book. Yeah, he did. I mean, that was very important to him. I, 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 I know he did, and towards the end, he really had the, had the one guy who was working for him doing a lot of the research. But it was still him doing the writing. It was still his voice. It was still an Elmore Leonard book. Um, and, you're, and there's nothing like it. And, and, and readers are very sophisticated these days, and they, and they, can, they can see right through it if you haven't gotten it right. So, well, do we? Do you have a website that we can go to? I sure do. It's it's authorstevehamilton dot com, and I'm also on Twitter at author steve. And I and I love talking to to readers and um and yeah. I mean, you, you can go there and see where I'm appearing. And um, so you're in I'll Boston. You're in Boston now. Are you going to do anything in New York? Oh, you're you're with Lee Child at Barnes yeah, and Noble. Be, let's let's blurb that. Yeah, um, I'll be at the, on the Upper East Side, Barnes and Noble, on June sixteenth. At seven o'clock, uh, Lee Child, of course, who writes the Jack Reacher series, and uh, I. Do, we'll it's do Barnes and Noble at one fifty East Eighty Sixth Street, which is between Lex and Third. And at seven o'clock, that's going to be jam packed. I'm going to be there myself. Oh, great! Uh, really looking forward to it. Uh, yeah, me too. He's, Lee's such a great guy. He's a really smart guy. He, he really knows his uh, knows his stuff. And of course, his his books are just fantastic. And I and I he was one of those guys who's been so supportive. Of, of this book, and I can't wait to do this event with him. Well, again, I urge everybody to read The Second Life of Nick Mason by Steve Hamilton. It is a great, great book uh, any time of year, but a wonderful summer read. And I will see you at Barnes & Noble in a couple of weeks. Excellent. Great. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.